Well, we're down here on this beautiful sunny day, and what a great day it is to be here as well at the Gatwick Aviation Museum. And I have to say, I'm in awe. We've had a great tour around, and uh, I never realised there was so much here. Now, soon the uh, Gatwick Aviation Museum is going to be open to the public. It's got some open days coming up, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But for the time being, I'd like to I'd like to introduce you to the owner and proprietor of the Gatwick Aviation. Museum, and that is Peter. Hello, Peter. How Good are you? Good day, Shelley. Good are day. Are you well? Yes, but well, sort of. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about why did you start an aviation museum in the first place? Because it was actually quite some time ago, wasn't it? 1986, my first aeroplane, which is that little Seahawk over there, and I had it outside the front. And that's another story with Mole Valley District Council, who were adamant that I was going to put a, a jet provost out the front at sort of one time and um, it had no wheels so I had to build a plinth and uh, we put it on, we were going to put it on a plinth and we applied for planning permission and the council in their wisdom turned it down because it had to have a plinth built in the green belt which was contrary to the regulations and they turned me down. My lawyers said if it had wheels on you didn't need planning permission so I bought the little Seahawk in a devilment really and I got started that it caused so much interest when it got here but that's a sort of a famous airplane it was in the Suez crisis in 1956 and was part of the Hunter One collection down at Bournemouth and the demise of that was a guy that owned it he got killed in an air accident in South Africa and all his estate had to be sold and settled the will and consequently I bought that at auction and it's caused me a lot of trouble since then. But it had a, it's caused a lot of interest with the colleges when I brought it here, from East Surrey College and Crawley College and enthusiasts. So I bought another one on wheels and another one on wheels and another one on wheels. And to the extent we've got 28 aeroplanes now and um, we are Gatwick Aviation Museum Limited, which is a registered charity. And I'm hoping that one day that Mole Valley District Council will give us planning permission um, to fulfill my dream and to put up a building to put these aircraft inside but we do also have now from Central Sussex College about a hundred students here come during the weekdays uh, during the term time and study in the classroom that I provided for them and also then they come out and uh, do hands-on experience with whatever subject they're looking at during their curriculum. You can't get better history a better history lesson than what you're giving to people here in this museum really can you I mean Ir irreplaceable Shelley irreplaceable Shelley uh, where can you go and get hands-on experience and aircraft of this caliber all oh, um, uh, from the 1950s onwards all peacekeeping airplanes really and they're amazing they're in absolutely brilliant condition we've just been in this one over here tell us a little bit more about this one here uh, that's a Mark III Phase III Shackleton and it's a, a six engine airplane the only six engine airplane built by the British government and it's um, uh, air, early warning aircraft it took part in the Cold War keeping uh, the track on submarines in the North Sea and uh, a very famous engine but air, airplane really and the architect of that was from Avro, Roy Chadwick, fascinating guy, made lots of airplanes, even up to the last one which was the um, Vulcan bomber and as you know one of them is still flying, uh, 558 and that was uh, due to come here as a matter of fact and we had permission to land at Gatwick airport and the fire department at Gatwick were going to get it through the fence for me and push it, position it here but due to some administration errors uh, it didn't come and it went to Bruntingthorpe and it's uh, now flying uh, which is a lovely uh, way to end its life flying in uh, Bruntingthorpe. Now you fly personally as well so you know a little bit about aeroplanes and the way they work and what they do. Flying seems to be a bit of a passion of yours. When did that start? I think uh, the passion was uh, 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 when I first bought that first Seahawk and I decided uh, and someone bought me after I bought that a um, opportunity to go for a half hour test flight at Red Hill and when I went um, I sort of fell in love with flying and then I bought my airplane and I've had uh, 25 years now flying my airplane. Incidentally, we do fly in here. We have our own runway, yeah. um, which is um, 
uh, rather nice to be able to fly in and out of your own place but I keep it at Red Hill because of security problems but at the same time it's a fascinating hobby and endless so you ne nobody but nobody's ever going to know all about aviation. No, I don't know. From what I've seen, it goes on and on and on. Now, it's not just the planes you've got here. The memorabilia that you actually have in the buildings over there, uh, in the actual museum side of it, is amazing. You've got some amazing memorabilia. Yeah, we have some fascinating uh, stuff in there from the, the Cold War era, uh, such as test equipment, radar and radio, and um, models, and also lots of engines which uh, depict uh, all of these airplanes here and the evolution of engines from piston to uh, nice jets um, up to uh, the Volca the um, Concorde airplane which is a Bristol um, uh, uh, lovely airplanes. Yeah, it's not just memorabilia of old planes you've also got the sort of memorabilia of uh, British Airways and, and Caledonian Airways and Air Europe and, and obviously uh, aeroplane organisations that that no longer exist in our in our world and probably will never come back which is priceless again isn't it well they're absolutely priceless but the uh, memorabilia from the uh, redundant airlines and from Gatwick like Dan Air, um, Air Europe, uh, Caledonian and also uh, we even got some stuff from Virgin and also Alan Bristow which was Bristow Helicopters most of that stuff uh, was uh, donated from people uh, so uh, I keep it as a memorabilia but we do have a passionate guy who looks after that for us, a guy named David Wise, and he looks after that for me. Now, when it, have you ever had a visit from somebody like Richard Branson? I mean, surely he's interested in this sort of history? Well, we do have um, uh, very some prominent people come in here on our runway to visit us and on to the Gatwick Airport if they can't get a slot in and utilising their runway either by helicopter or a fixed wing aircraft. And the last one was in here. Um, it was probably someone from Scotland, uh, Boyd Munro, who was a CASA or the Australian Civil Aviation Authority. He came to visit us and uh, landed his jet in here. So uh, we do have a runway here which is capable of taking small jets. Now, you're going to have some open days. That was the main reason for us popping down and seeing you today. Uh, the people of Crawley are able to come down, or anywhere really, surrounding areas anywhere, able to come down and... and well, I have to say, just gape at all of these aircraft because they are pretty awesome. I mean, they're, they're actually quite frightening up in, in person because they're so large and they're so old that... It's, don't you think they're quite scary in a way? Well, they're one-offs, that's it. They have a character all of their own. Every aeroplane here has its own history, and uh, I could explain to you some of them, but it's extended. Like the Sea Vixen, the Buccaneer, and the Seahawk, and the Hunters. They all have their own personal histories, and uh, I'm hoping that for one day I might be able to build a, a building to put them in so we can preserve them for all time so that their kids and children's children can uh, enjoy them as such as we are. Well, we think that's a fantastic idea. So tell us, tell us more. The open days are September the 11th. Tell, tell us some more dates. Uh, the, yeah, they, the, the rest of the days we're open this year in the summertime is 11th or the 22nd of September and the 9th of October. But we are open by appointment by just ringing the number on our web pages, which is put in Google Gatwick Aviation Museum Limited, and it will throw up all our web pages, which is a fascination in its own and uh, a unique web pages in aviation. Well, we'll put a link to you on the write-up anyway, so they can link directly to you and get your telephone number and hopefully come down to this awe-inspiring area. And I have to say, you've got to come down because I never imagined how much was here. I've seen it a little bit, and so obviously I've known Peter Valance for some time, and I knew that there were little bits here, but I never imagined that I would experience what I have today, and it is awesome. Do come down. It's well worth seeing. I'd like to thank you, Peter, for talking to us today. Thank you, Wish you all the best of luck. We hope um, that you get your building, because we believe that that would be awesome as well, um, having a building where all these could go in and little write-ups about who they're about and what yeah. they're about. Yeah. That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? And also part of the happy times Absolutely. in Crawley. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> happy times. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. It's Shelley at the Gatwick Aviation Museum down here in, where are you, Charwood? Charwood. Thank you.